So God has called you and equipped you and destined you to flourish in life. He's called you and destined you and equipped you to be fruitful. For Jesus said in John 15, when you produce uh, much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. So here's the truth you need to pack up and take home with you. Since fruitfulness is your divine destiny, you must move your life in the direction of fruitfulness. If harvest is your aim, then you must move your life in the direction of harvest. But this poses a problem for many of us because even though we want to flourish and we want to be fruitful, we're actually moving in the wrong direction. Our goal is to flourish, but we think that means to get rich or get a lot of property or become popular and go viral on TikTok. Daddy, Daddy, I'm hungry. Please give me something to eat. Son, you know that food is scarce. Let's go and pick some fruit from the tree and fill our bellies. We don't have any food. But Daddy, Daddy, I went to the apata and I found grain. There's grain in a sack. Daddy, we can soak the grain and fill it. No! That grain is our seed. We have to save it for sowing. If we don't plant that grain, we won't reap a harvest. If we don't reap a harvest, we have no future. Daddy, I don't understand. Little Iwenya looked at the ground and a tear fell down his cheek. Come, my son, the father said. I will show you. So the father took little Iwenya by the hand and they went to the apata. He gathered the grain from the sack and took his tools and they went to the farm. They dug in the ground and sowed the grain. They sowed in tears. They sowed in hunger. That night, a restless calm settled over the family compound. Awenya couldn't sleep. He kept thinking of what had happened. He kept feeling the hunger in his stomach. He kept wondering why his father had thrown away the seed and buried it in the ground. It didn't make sense. The night turned to day. The day turned to weeks, and the family waited. But in the waiting, God was working. In the waiting, the roots were going down deep. In the waiting, the seed was blossoming and growing. In the waiting, the seed was pushing against the darkness and pushing against the soil. In the waiting, a sprout came up, and then leaves came forth. And in the waiting, as they watched and waited, it turned to wonder. As the plant grew up out of the ground, so hope grew up in Awenya's heart as he watched the harvest come. Finally, the day for harvest came. The father took his son and his machete and they went to the field. They came in with armloads of harvest. They came in carrying sheets. There was laughter and celebration at the home that day. Everybody ate. They had enough to give an offering in church. And daddy, Awenya said, don't forget to set aside some of the grain and put it in the apata because we need to sow next year. Maybe you're here today and your eyes are filled with tears. Your heart's filled with frustration. There's nothing. You've sown everything and you're waiting. You're in that period of wondering if your harvest will come. Or maybe you're here today and you're starting a new venture. You're about to sow your seed, but you hesitate. Are you sowing in the right soil? Will there be a harvest? Or maybe you're here today and you're enjoying your harvest. You sowed some time ago and now you're reaping and you could just coast through life. But if sowing last time brought a harvest, why not sow again? Why not double your sowing and double your harvest? Why not go beyond just taking in for yourself and doing something that will impact others beyond you? No matter who you are or where you're at in your faith journey, we all need to understand the truth about sowing and reaping in life. For you see, every one of us has been destined by God to flourish, but flourishing doesn't happen by chance. Flourishing is not the result of a miracle. Flourishing comes uh, when we follow the laws of God. For when you understand the power of the seed and apply the principle of sowing, you are guaranteed the promise of sheaves. A 
Almighty and everlasting Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and we ask that you would speak to us today. Lord, we've been studying, sowing, and reaping. We've seen our destinies to flourish, but give us the final key we need to lay a foundation to flourish this year and in the life to come. Open our hearts and minds and give us understanding. We submit to you now. We bind every voice of the enemy that would come to deceive or disturb or distract us. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, I loose the power of the Holy Spirit to enlighten our hearts, to give us grace to obey, to grow and flourish. We thank you by faith in Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. I invite you to take a moment, join your faith with mine right now. Put your hand on your chest and pray out loud after me, Lord Jesus, speak to my heart, change my life, manifest your glory in me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Welcome to Agape House. We're wrapping up this month as we wrap up part one of our sermon series, Flourish. Throughout this month, we've been looking at the foundations we need to flourish. Next week, next month, we're launching into the fields that we're going to flourish in. We're going to take these foundational truths and put them into practice, learning how to flourish in your feelings, in your family, in your finance, and in your future. But before we get to then, we've got one more sermon in our foundation series, and it's the promise of sheaves. And to help us learn the truth for today, we printed sermon notes. They look like this. They're in your bulletin, so go ahead and take them out and follow along with me. And don't forget, there's a QR code on the back of the notes. You can scan that to put it in your phone or in your tablet. And of course, you can always get the notes and the devotional for free online. There at the top of your notes and on the screen ahead of you is our scripture text today from Psalm 126, verses 5 and 6. I want to ask everybody to read it out loud together. Read it with faith. Are you ready? Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. May the Lord bless the reading of his word to our hearts today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. You may be familiar with this famous passage from Psalm 126. It's a promise of harvest. It's a promise of joy. It's a promise of so many things. But as we dig deeper, we see that there's more truth to these verses than we might think at first. When we break down this passage, we discover three factors you need to reach your harvest. If you want to reach your harvest in 2024, just say, this sermon is for me. So let's get started with our first factor you need to reach your harvest, and here it is, direction. Everybody say direction. Now, at first, that might seem strange. We don't typically think of direction having anything to do with harvest, but that's exactly what our scripture text says. Listen, it says, he who goes forth, tell your neighbor, go forth. He who goes forth bearing seed for sowing. So the word of God tells us we've got to go out. We've got to be facing forward. We've got to be looking outward in order to get to our harvest. And that's talking about direction. And here's why direction is so vital for your harvest. The fact is your direction determines your destination. You won't get to the right harvest if you're facing the wrong way. And the Bible makes it clear what our destination is. For each and every one of us, our destination destination is to flourish. Our destination is fruitful. That's why God put Adam and Eve in a garden. It's a symbol that man was meant to be nurtured and to nurture. That's why God said in Genesis 1, be fruitful and multiply. That goes far beyond reproducing offspring. It talks about every area of our lives. And even though man fell and was kicked out of the garden, and even though we've fallen far from God, it is still God's destiny and plan for everyone one of us to flourish. He wants us to come back to him and follow him so we can flourish. That's why Jesus said in John 10, 10, my purpose is to give life in all its fullness, more and better life than you ever dreamed of. So God has called you and equipped you and destined you to flourish in life. He's called you and destined you and equipped you to be fruitful. For Jesus said in John 15, when you produce uh, much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. So here's the truth you need to pack up and take home with you. Since fruitfulness is your divine destiny, you must move your life in the direction of fruitfulness. If harvest is your aim, then you must move your life in the direction of harvest. But this poses a problem for many of us 
Because even though we want to flourish and we want to be fruitful, we're actually moving in the wrong direction. Our goal is to flourish, but we think that means to get rich or get a lot of property or become popular and go viral on TikTok. But if your focus is on acquiring property or getting rich or being trendy or going viral on TikTok, you're facing the wrong direction. Your destiny is not to get wealthy so you can enjoy your life. Your destiny is to make an impact, to be fruitful. God wants to bless you. God wants to prosper you. But he wants to do it so that you can be a blessing to others. This is the principle we find that when God spoke to Abraham in Genesis 12. He said, I will bless you and make you famous. And you will be a blessing to others. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. God blesses you so you'll be a blessing. That's why our scripture text says, those who go forth bearing seed for sowing. To go forth, you must be facing outward. To go forth, you must be looking forward. To go forward, you've got to get to your harvest by looking outward because you cannot flourish in fruitfulness when you're inward focused. Fruit is always meant to be shared. And this is the problem for many of us in the church today. We're so inward focused, we've stopped going forth bearing precious seed. Many of us today are praying, God, send me my destiny helper. I lose my destiny helper. Well, I've got a better prayer. Why don't you start praying, God, make me a destiny helper for others? When you pray, God, send me my destiny helper, it's an inward-focused prayer. But when you pray, God, make me a destiny helper for others, it's outward-focused. It's going forth, and you will reach your harvest. That's what I learned back in 1999 when I visited Monrovia, Liberia. I'd gone to Liberia to conduct a pastor's seminar. The nation had just passed through a horrible phase of their civil war. There was starvation and hunger, and death everywhere. When I got to Monrovia, I'd heard stories about the thousands of poor children who'd been orphaned, lost their parents, and were destitute. So on the Saturday I was there, I asked my host pastor to take me to an orphanage to meet some of the children. And when I got to this orphanage, I met my destiny helper. My destiny helper came in the form of a three-year-old orphan boy. He was poor, dressed in rags, hungry. Both his parents had died. And when I met that boy, I knew that I could not turn my back and do nothing. I knew I had to help that little boy. That little boy became my destiny helper, not because he gave me money, but because God used him to give me vision. That little boy became my destiny helper, not by introducing me to a wealthy donor or a benefactor, but by God. God connecting me to compassion for orphan children and children at risk. And because God spoke to me through that encounter, we launched the Agape Children's Home in July 2000. For the last 24 years, we've been blessed to sow into the lives of hundreds of children and become destiny helpers for them and raise them to become great in men and women of God. We sowed into Eric Amwating. Eric Amwating came to us 24 years ago, an orphan, but we sowed into him. He's a graduate of UPSA with a business administration degree, and he's one of our most valued employees at Agape House. We sowed into Obed Quechi. Obed Quechi came to us. We raised him. He finished with a biological science degree from KNUST. He's now a medical student becoming a doctor. You saw him on stage singing with heart song. We sowed into Matthias Amiel, also a graduate from KNUST in engineering. He's working and serving the Lord. We've sown into these lives, and God is reaping a harvest. All of them are living for God. All of them are glorifying God. All of them are men of faith who will make an impact in this nation and in this generation. And we are reaping a mighty harvest by raising men and women who love Jesus, who will make a difference. Agape Children's Home is the best investment I've ever made. It's my destiny. And my destiny helper wasn't a rich man. It was a three-year-old orphan boy who connected me with God's vision. 
So here's the truth you need to pack up and take home with you. Don't focus on yourself. Focus on impact. In order to get to your harvest, you've got to face the direction that will cause you to flourish. You can't flourish and be fruitful without being focused on others. For if you gain everything the world has, but keep it only for yourself, you are poor indeed. That's why Jesus said in Mark 8, if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. And this is the very example Jesus gave for us. When he came from heaven, he was constantly giving out of himself to others. He lived to give. He could have taken all the glory and all the reward and all the blessing, but he gave it away. For Mark 10, 45 says, the Son of Man did not come for people to serve him. He came to serve others and to give his life to save many people. And in Jesus' example, we find our path to fruitfulness, for no one has ever had as great a harvest as Jesus. And to get to your harvest, your direction must be aligned with his. You must get to the right outcome by fulfilling your destiny, not your desires. And that brings us to our second truth today. The second factor you need to reach your harvest is discipline. Everybody say discipline. Listen to what our scripture text says in verse five. He who continually goes forth weeping. Now. Think about the picture God is painting for us here. He's showing a man who's faithful. There's consistency required. It's not a one and done task. You don't sow at 10 a.m. and reap at 1 p.m. To reach your harvest, you have to discipline yourself to be diligent in planting and patient in sowing. And consider the fact that God puts a price upon your harvest. He says you go forth continually weeping. In other words, there's suffering involved. There's sacrifice involved. There's a pain involved. You have to discipline yourself and make the effort. For discipline may bring tears, but it also brings results. And if you face the right direction and discipline yourself to sow into your divine destiny, you will reap a, a harvest. For the fact is God is the only one who can guarantee your harvest. God is the only one who knows the path you should take to reach your destiny. That's why Proverbs 16, 9 says, human beings plan their lives, but the Lord decides where their steps will take them. And you can plot and plan your course. You can lay out a five-year agenda of how you're going to flourish, but when you leave God out of your decisions, you can never guarantee success. The problem for most of us is that oftentimes our desires compete with our destiny. If we pursue our desires, we can't reach our destiny. In order to get to our destiny, we have to surrender our desires and follow his path. That's what we can learn from the amazing true story of an American man named Scott Harrison. Scott Harrison was living the life that many people would have envied and dreamed of. He was a nightclub promoter in New York City, and he had the chance to mingle with high-level celebrities. The well-known and the wealthy were well-known to Scott. His days and nights were filled with drugs and drinking and beautiful women and riches, but the outward appearances were deceiving in spite of all the outward outward success and prosperity, something was wrong on the inside. In fact, Scott Harrison says now, if I continued down this path, there was a good chance I would die before I reached the age of 40. Scott was sowing bad seed into bad soil and he was reaping a, a bad harvest. But then in 2003, Scott Harrison had an awakening. He realized that in order to reach the right harvest, he had to stop chasing desire and start chasing destiny. See, Scott had been raised in a Christian home. He'd gone to church, but his job as a nightclub promoter had taken him far from God. Now facing his own bankrupt soul, Scott made a U-turn. Instead of living for his own pleasure and passion, Scott recommitted his life to Jesus Christ. He sold all his worldly goods and got on a ship called the Mercy Ship, which sails around the world providing medical care and help for the poor. Scott spent two years ministering to the poor in Liberia. Then in 2006, he started Charity Water. 
Charity Water is an organization that brings clean water to millions of people around the globe. Since it began in 2006, Charity Water has funded more than 138,000 clean water projects in 29 nations, giving over 17 million people clean water. When Scott Harrison wanted a better harvest, he began by choosing destiny over desire. He gave up chasing external pleasures and started disciplining himself for internal progress. He stopped running after temporary wealth and started living for eternal treasure. And the results changed his life and the lives of 17 million other people. So let me ask you a question today. Are you more interested in fulfilling your desires or fulfilling your destiny? Because many of us are making major life decisions based on what we want, not what God wants. We're making decisions to chase desire, not destiny. We choose according to fantasy, not fruitfulness. And it's no wonder we don't flourish. For the fact is, when you make choices based on desire, not destiny, there is no guarantee you will get what you desire. The only guarantee of a harvest, the only promise of sheaves, is when you follow divine destiny. See, harvest is a law of God. Seed time and harvest will never cease on this earth, and fruitfulness is a promise from the Father. But there is no promise to those chasing desires, only a promise to those chasing destiny. That's why James 4 says, look here, you who say, today or tomorrow, we are going to a certain town and we'll stay there a year. We will do business there and make a profit. How do you know? Ask your neighbor, how do you know? How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like a morning fog. It's here a little while, then it's gone. What you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or that. What's our destiny? Otherwise, you are boasting about your own pretentious plans. You're building your life on your own desire, and all such boasting is evil. Many people today in Ghana say, I want to go to America. I want to go abroad. I will go and get a good degree in a good university, get a good job, and make a lot of money. How do you know? How do you know you'll make money? How do you know you'll get a good job? You have no Guarantee. That's what Alberta Adura Quarte discovered. She was a telecom engineer graduate from KNUSD. Then she got her big break. She gained admission to Clemson University, USA, to go and pursue her PhD. She got to America. She was chasing her dream until she wasn't. On Sunday, June 18th last year, she was riding in a BMW sedan when they hit an SUV head-on, and Alberta died on the spot. How do you know? Jacqueline Amapokua thought she had it made. She got a visa to the USA and got a job as a healthcare worker at Methodist Medical Center in Dallas. She was making money. She was chasing her dream. Things were going great until they weren't. At 11 a.m. on October 22nd, 2022, a lone random gunman entered Methodist Medical Center, shot and killed two people, and Jacqueline died on the spot. How do you know? Winifred and Harrison Bochway thought they were living the American dream. They moved from Ghana with their two children to Berks County, Pennsylvania. Things were really going well. But behind closed doors, it's reported that Harrison was beating his wife, Winifred. She decided to leave him. So he killed her. Police found Winifred's dead body in the toilet at their American home. Harrison is now in prison. So how do you know? How do you know that going to America will give you a happy life? How do you know? Because when you're chasing your desires and not your destiny, there is no guarantee. If God sends you to America or Europe or Dubai or anywhere, he will cover you. He will bless you. He will use you. He will open doors for you and you will flourish. But if you're simply chasing your dreams and your desires to get rich and get a better life, then you have no guarantee you will achieve what you're chasing. So let me ask you a question today. Is your desire to go abroad desire 
or destiny. Because see, even if you make it, even if you get there, even if you get rich and all you have is money, life is more than money. Jesus said in Luke 12, life is not measured by how much you own. You may get rich and backslide. You may get rich and go to hell. Your son might get a degree from Cambridge, Cambridge, and he might come back gay drug addict who hates God. How do you know? Many of us are running morning, noon, and night to get more money. We tell people, I want to give my children a better life. That's nice, but a better life isn't about more money. A better life for your children is more of you, more of your time, more of your focus, more of your attention, more of your love. How can you give your child a better life when you're always flying to Dubai and Shanghai? You may make enough money to put him in the top school. You may make enough money to set him up for life. You may make enough money that he's settled forever. But what about his faith? What about his values? What example are you giving to your children when you're always chasing money? You're telling them that money means more than family. You're telling them that money is all there is. And you cannot flourish with money alone. You cannot flourish when you have plenty of property but no peace. For Jesus said in Mark 8, what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? A few years ago during our outreach on the street to prostitutes on Lagos Avenue, we called it Love on the Streets, we met a young lady and she told us her story. It broke my heart. I know it will break yours. Apparently growing up, no one took much notice of her. No one cared for her. She had to fend for herself. So when she grew up, she decided she was going to settle things once for all. She was going to take care of herself. And for some reason, she decided that if if she could buy a plot of land, then she would be settled. She could build a house and live. No one could evict her. She could run her business from there and make money and take care of herself. She was going to buy that land. So she set out to get her land come hell or high water. She started working on Lagos Avenue, selling her body to men. It wasn't easy at first, men coming and going. She had to silence her conscience and silence the shame and silence all the fears and doubts. But she was going to take care of things. She was going to get that land. And eventually, she turned enough tricks and made enough money that she was able to go and buy a plot of land. She had the title deed signed, sealed, and delivered. She was a landowner. She showed her family, huh? (laughs) And then the shaking started. She'd wake up at midnight in the middle of her bed, covered with sweat. Her stomach was turning. She noticed the hives and rash on her arms and neck. She went to the doctor and she was diagnosed with HIV AIDS. It hit her like an articulated truck. There was no cure, no hope, no help. The piece of land couldn't do anything. The piece of land just sat there in silence. Her friends couldn't help her. In fact, they mocked her. (laughs) She bought a piece of land. Now she has AIDS. You may feel sorry for that woman. You may think she got what she deserved. But here's what we all need to understand. We are no different than she is when we spend our life chasing money that will not last. You can buy a land. You can buy a thousand lands. You can buy the whole of Ghana. But what does it compare with the value of your soul? If you gain everything and lose your soul, you are lost. And you have no guarantee you'll reach your harvest by chasing desires. But when you aim at your divine destiny, you have confidence you will reach your harvest. God promises it to you. He promises is in Psalm 25, when people choose to follow the Lord, he shows them the best way to live. They will enjoy good things and their children will get the land God promised. So here's the truth you need to pack up and take home with you. Make destiny-based decisions, not desire-based decisions. To achieve your successful harvest, your direction must align with God. To achieve a successful harvest, you must discipline yourself self, die to self, and choose destiny. That brings us to our third factor to achieve your harvest, determination. Everybody say determination. Listen to how our scripture text encourages us in verse 6. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He will doubtless, 
he will doubtless, he will doubtless, he will doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. You see, determination turns going forth to coming in. Determination turns bearing into bringing. Determination turns weeping into rejoicing. Determination turns seeds into sheaves. And God says it is doubtless. There is no doubt. It is guaranteed by God Almighty. It will come to pass when you face God's direction and pursue God's destiny for your life. When you sow with discipline and determination, you will come again. You will reap a harvest. You will carry sheaves greater than you imagine. Stay the course. Don't give up for you shall doubtless come with your harvest. For God always says what he means and he always does what he says. He never fails for his promises are sure. 2 Corinthians 1 says Jesus Christ, the Son of God, does not waver between yes and no. He is God's ultimate yes. Somebody say yes. He always does what he says for all All, A-L-L, all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. Somebody shout yes. Yes. And through Christ, our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for his glory. And God is here today to tell you, yes, I will give you a harvest. Yes, I will bless you. Yes, you will flourish. Yes, you will be fruitful. Yes, you will make an impact. Yes, when you sow your seed. For 2 Corinthians 9 says, he who supplies seed to the sower, that's God, and bread for food, will, will, tell your neighbor he will, will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. That's the lesson we can learn from an American farmer named Ansley Mueller. Ansley was a soybean farmer in Ohio, USA. But back in 1977, he faced disaster. Right at harvest time, as the harvest was ready to be reaped, a devastating storm swept through Ohio. There was rain and flooding, and his acreage was totally flooded and destroyed. Ansley Mueller walked out after the storm ended, walking through his field mile after mile, saw crops uprooted, crops underwater, plants destroyed. It looked like the end for him and his farm. But then as he was going through the field, he saw a miracle. In the midst of the flooding, in the midst of the devastation, there was one, one, one single solitary soybean plant standing proud and erect, standing against the storm, giving him hope. Ansley Mueller harvested that one single soybean plant and took out the soybeans and counted 503. He got 503 seeds from the soybean. Well, that was hardly enough for a week's meal. He couldn't sell it. So Ansley Mueller set it aside through the winter and planted all 503 seeds the next planting season. And he waited and reaped a crop. What he reaped from the 503 soybeans was 14. Kilograms of soybeans. He could have sold that, he could have kept it, but he decided rather than eating it or selling it, he would set it aside once again. So he set aside the whole entire 14 kilograms and planted them the next planting season. In the second year, he harvested 1,095 kilograms of soybeans. He said, Wait a minute, let me see what will happen if I wait, if I'm determined, if I set it aside again. So he set it aside again, and in the third year, he planted it. And he got 57,152 kilograms of soybeans. That's over 120,000 pounds of soybeans. Ainsley Mueller faced the devastation of his entire crop, but he refused to give up. He took the one plant remaining and planted it over and over with determination. And in the end, he reaped a mighty harvest. Maybe in 2023, you experienced a devastating storm. Trouble came and flooded your field and you lost everything, but there's something still remaining. It's you. You're standing. You're here. And if you'll pick yourself up and throw yourself into God's care and pursue your destiny, you will flourish. And God says to you today in Galatians 6, you will always harvest what you plant. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, 
we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. For you always harvest what you plant. So be determined. Follow your destiny. Discipline yourself. Don't give up. For your life is a seed. Your time is a seed. Your gifts and talents are seeds. Uh, your abilities and your spiritual gifts and your money, they're all seeds, seeds that you can sow in God's hand. When God gets involved, your seed goes from simple to significant. When God gets involved, your seed goes from small to sizable. When God gets involved, your seed goes from solitary to substantial. And when you plant your good seed in good soil, it has unlimited potential. Take heed to what you sow because what you sow is what you grow. Take heed to where you sow because not all soil is fertile ground. Take heed to how you sow because no matter how powerful the seed, if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. But when you sow generously, you'll see a harvest, a mighty harvest. That's the promise of sheaves. You go out weeping, but you come rejoicing. You go out in confusion, but you come in wisdom. You go out in darkness, but you come out in light. You go out wondering, but you come in faith. You go out in doubt, but you will doubtless come again bearing sheaves. For when you unleash the power of the seed and apply the principle of sowing, you are guaranteed the promise of sheaves. Let me pray for you. Oh God, we come in the name of Jesus. Lord, we need your divine direction. You've given us all a destiny. Help us to see today that we are destined to flourish, not just so we can live in luxury, but so we can make an impact. Help us to discern today the difference between our desires and our divine destiny. Give us courage to discipline ourselves, to die to self and yield to you. Help us in the face of the storm to be determined. Let us harness the power of the seed. Let us apply the principle of sowing and reaping. Lord, let us see the promise of sheaves.